My name is Chris Teutsch. I'm the Forage Extension Specialist at the University of Kentucky's Research and Education Center at Princeton and a proud member of the newly established Grain and Forage Center of Excellence. Today I'd like to talk about calibrating a no-till grain drill. We can use the same calibration procedure for any seed that's appropriate for the grain drill. So just not forages, but small grains and soybeans also. The procedure that we're using today can either be used in the field where we're actually pulling the grain drill, or we can use it in a stationary position where we'll turn the drive wheel on the grain drill. So the tools that we'll need to calibrate the drill with using this procedure is a tape measure. We'll use this tape measure for several things. We will use it to uh, measure out 150 feet in the field along with these flags so that we can mark where that 150 feet is. And we'll use it to measure the circumference of the drive wheel if we want to use the stationary procedure. We also need a, a tape measure so we can measure the distance between our disc openers, which is important uh, to know when we use the calibration chart. And then we'll need a couple tools to remove the seed tubes. Usually we can do, get by with just a screwdriver and a pair of pliers. The last thing we'll need is something to catch the, the seed with coming out of the seed tubes. I, I prefer to use just a, a simple sandwich bag, a Ziploc bag, and a rubber band to hold that bag in place. And we'll show you how to attach those in a few minutes. The most important part is a scale, uh, a gram scale. The gram scale will be used to weigh the seed so that we can determine whether we're putting out enough seed or too much seed. So we've developed a simple procedure that can be used uh, on multiple grain drills, so not just a John Deere or a Great Plains, but any type of grain drill that you're working with. What I want to point out now is how we use this table here. This table tells us how much seed we need to collect in 150 feet to achieve a seeding rate specified in this top column here. So we have a seeding rate going from two pounds, which would be something like white clover, up to 180 pounds, which would be three bushels of wheat per acre. It doesn't matter what forage species you're using, you just um, determine your seeding rate and then use that appropriate seeding rate from the chart. And this is in pounds per acre. The other piece of information that we need is the disc opener spacing. Most of our drills will have disc opening spacings between six and eight inches. Um, the most common would be seven and a half inches. But it's important that you measure the disc opener spacing using the tape measure on the particular drill that you're calibrating. And then from this information, we can draw a line. So we're using a seven and a half, a drill with a seven and a half inch spacing today and we'd like to calibrate that drill for 120 pounds of seed per acre. That's two bushels of wheat per acre. So if we kind of follow these arrows across and down, we'll see that in 150 feet, we need to catch 117 grams of seed per disc opener. That's our target seeding rate to get 120 pounds of seed per acre. So we'll want to collect 117.3 grams of seed. All right, so one of the first steps that we want to do when we calibrate a grain drill is make sure all of our seed tubes are clean. And we do that by blowing them out with air pressure or running a wire through that seed tube. Do not skip this step because seed tubes, small seed tubes, um, for the legume box especially, are great places for mud daubers to build nests or spiders to put webs in. It's easy enough to do. You just pull the seed tube off and simply put a air and just make sure that there's nothing obstructing that seed tube. Compressed air works very well. Uh, you can also run a wire through it if you don't have compressed air, but ideally compressed air would be my first choice. After you do that, you just reconnect the seed tubes. And you need to really do this each time that you use the drill, especially if it hasn't been used for a while, because insects and, and spiders will tend to build nests in those tubes. All right, now we have the drive wheel of the drill off the ground. And this drive wheel, when it rotates, turns the seating mechanism for the drill. So we want it just far enough off the ground that we can rotate it easily. 
It's important to remember that when we're jacking this drill up, ideally we want it hooked to a tractor and we want the emergency brake on that tractor set so that the drill cannot move back and forth and we can jack it up safely. For calibrating the drill in the stationary position, we need to determine the circumference or the distance around this wheel. And there's two ways to do that. We can actually measure the diameter of the wheel and then do the math by multiplying the diameter times pi, which is 3.14. Or we can actually measure, physically measure the distance around this wheel by putting the tape measure around this wheel. All right, so we can see that we're at seven, 0.8 feet for the circumference of this wheel. That means every time it turns one revolution, we're moving that drill 7.8 feet. Our calibration seating chart is based on 150 feet of travel. All we do is take 150 feet and we divide it by the circumference of that wheel, which is 7.8 feet in this instance. And that will come out to be approximately 20 revolutions of this wheel. So we can apply this to any drive wheel on any drill. So if we had a smaller or larger drive wheel, we just divide 150 feet by the circumference of that drive wheel. To use our seating chart, we need to determine the distance between the disc openers. Um, most drills will be somewhere between six and eight inches that we'll use for seating forages. This particular drill, we wanna go ahead and measure. We're gonna be measuring between um, two disc openers here. This is 15 inches. Now, there's one disc opener ahead of this uh, that is splitting these two disc openers. So if we're at 15 inches, we're gonna actually be at seven and a half inches for this particular grain drill. And that's the distance that we will wanna use for the, um, on the seating chart is seven and a half inches. A good starting point when you're calibrating a drill is to go with the seating chart that you usually find in either the owner's manual or inside the lid of the grain drill. And that gives us a crop and then it tells us the setting to use to get a given number of pounds per acre. And while this is a good tool to use as the drill wears and as we use different seed lots which can vary in size, these numbers are not exact. So it's very important especially for small seed of forages, that we use this as a starting point, but we actually calibrate the drill. A lot of times seed will flow differently from different seed lots, and especially seed that has a clay coating will flow much faster through the drill than we anticipate using this seeding chart. But this is, this is what we should use for the starting point. And we're using wheat for our demonstration today. And what we wanna do is go in and just put in enough to cover the seed holes in this drill. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so now we're gonna to go to the seed chart and we're gonna look for wheat. And we find it right here. And we wanna calibrate it for 120 pounds per acre. So that's gonna be somewhere between 24 to 28. So we're probably gonna start somewhere around 25 and see how many pounds per acre that puts out when we do our actual calibration. The first thing that we wanna do before we start calibration is adjust this seating mechanism according to the drill chart. And that's the chart inside the lid on the grain drill. For today's calibration, it said we should be starting somewhere around 25. Right now we're set at 21, so we're gonna open this up a little bit. We're gonna start right at 25 and see how much seed we're putting out. You wanna make sure and turn the drive mechanism on the drill and make sure that there's seed coming out of each tube. You'll see a little bit of purple seed with this wheat seed and that's a little bit of alfalfa that was left in a small legume box on the drill. So then the next step after we make sure that there's some seed coming out of each opener is to disconnect three to five seed tubes to calibrate the drill with. And we'll just simply loosen that hose clamp and then left the tube off. And we like to do it not all beside each other, but kind of across the width of the drill. Slide this bag up over the seed tube and then simply just put a rubber band on it to kind of hold this bag in place. So at this point in time, I'm going to turn the drive wheel 20 rotations, which will give us 150 feet of travel distance. The next step, we'll be removing this bag, which we do very carefully not to spill any seed, and then weighing how much seed is in that bag. 
If you remember from the earlier look at the chart, we want to catch about 117.3 grams of seed. Now we're going to tear the scale for the bag. This is very important because we don't want to include the bag weight with the seed. So what that means is we put that bag on and then we hit our tear button and that brings it back to zero. Now we can put this bag in when we get this weight, we'll get only the weight of the seed. So as you can see, we're at 75 grams of seed that we caught per disc opener. We want to be at 117 grams so that we're putting out 120 pounds of total seed per acre. So that means we want to open this up a little bit more. So we're going to go ahead and open it up from 25 to 30 to get a little bit more seed coming out. So we've opened the drill up a little bit and we've redone the calibration. We want to be within 10% of our targeted range. We want to make sure our, our scale is teared for the bag. And we went from 75 to 97 grams. So we want to open it up just a little bit more so that we can get within 10% of 117 grams. So as you can see, we've surpassed our targeted range of 117 grams by about 15%. So we need to close the drill down a little bit and catch the seed one more time to make sure that we're within plus or minus 10% of the targeted seed weight. The most important part is to put the seed tubes back on. It's commonly forgotten and get them tightened down and you'll be ready to go to the field. So now that we have the drill calibrated, the next step is to take it to the field and check to make sure that our seeding depth is correct. With most small seed of forages, we want to be at about a half an inch seeding depth. That's a little bit different than larger seeded things like soybeans where we can be an inch or an inch and a half deep. So we want to make sure that our seeding depth is definitely no deeper than one inch for small seeded forages, but probably closer to a half an inch if possible. And there's some other setup that we'll need to do in the field. But that's uh, for another video, another day. So thank you for taking the time to watch this video. If you have any questions, please contact your local extension office. We've got a tremendous resource in our local extension agents.